Hi, everybody. So I've got Julianne, Sarah, and Anna here with me today, and we're going to continue our hidden history series. And we're just going to talk about the up till now time period. So 75,000 years up to now. And I wrote a lot of stuff down. So I'm going to be reading a little bit because last time I forgot several things. So I just want to read it and make sure I get everything out. Um, so basically 75,000 years ago, the earth folded. So the folding is the tectonic plates. So basically there was some unrest leading up to that time. The Lemurians went underwater. So they live underwater right now. And they have a whole separate civilization going on. And we're going to talk about them later. But basically there was wars and like unrest going on right then. So it folded. So over the years, the Anunnaki... The Anunnaki came down and they were enormous to begin with. So I got that they were 40 feet tall. So at the beginning of the 30, of the 75,000 years, they were that big. And they brought the moon with them. So that's how they came here. The moon was the moon was their spaceship. So that's how they arrived and I know the moon is hollow and all that kind of stuff. And the moon that we see is not the moon that they brought. Like that's a picture of the moon, but we're just seeing a hologram. And I also got, and forgive the weird, you know, way these things come in, but I also got that the tidal effect of the moon is actually covering up a magnetic effect that's going on on the earth. So the tides are a magnetic issue. They're not actually caused by the moon. Um, so they were neutral when they arrived, the Anunnaki. They were huge. And they came and then they split. So when they split, it was the aspects of them that split. So like the male and the female. And that's the energy, not the sex. So basically the feminine and the masculine. So the masculine went dark at that point of the Anunnaki and the feminine became light. So the neutral ended. And I think that's because of where the earth was in the universe, the energy interfered with them. And then there were endless wars so there were many, many wars that happened after that. And another movie that came in to watch um, as far as the split was to watch the movie Thor <clears throat> because they were basically like the gods of that time. So, but they were bigger than the actors in the movie, obviously. But I also got that they switched the narrative in that movie. So in the movie, there was one dark brother and one light brother. And the light brother was like buff, muscular, masculine, like save the world guy. And the other brother was kind of feminine to me. And he was the dark guy. But in reality, it was flipped around. So the energies were flipped. And let's see what happened next. So then there were endless wars and the humans who were basically tweaked, they weren't, they weren't created by the Anunnaki, but they were interfered with by the Anunnaki. The, they were tweaked and they were caught in the middle. So the feminine side of the Anunnaki was trying to keep the humans safe. They were interacting with the humans. They created the hybrids with the humans, which were the giants. And the giants were also split. So the giants were, some were not nice and some were awesome. Some wanted to communicate with the humans and they were like in the maybe up to 10 foot range. And that's still the really tall people that we see these days 
most of them have some of that bloodline within them. And then basically, so what we're talking about is the Anunnaki and Atlantis, it was basically the same civilization. So they covered the entire top of earth. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen because I drew kind of a cartoon picture. So everybody could see what I actually was seeing. My computer will hurry. <laughs> okay, so what I did, let's see, this will show us, but basically they lived on the top of the entire earth which is that toroidal field, which we talked about last time. And they had access to the whole thing. And other people lived on the bottom. So I'm not sure where this picture is. Hang on one sec. My internet is slow. Come on. There, something's happening. Okay, so, <laughs> um, and I'm gonna show you the picture of, so that's, I wanna show you the top one first. It'll show me. So this one, this is what I saw. So basically the top of earth is more flat-ish. It's not flat, but it's flatter. And basically, we only take up a fourth of that. And the rest of it is more green. So the rest of it, the continents are greener, they're more lush. And we're the ones who have had the weather control and all the crazy nonsense. So that's why the, we have some brown on our continents. And that is not correct. For any kind of map. That's just a cartoon to show you guys. <laughs> and then also um, Antarctica, see the orange dot in the middle. So Antarctica is right on the edge of the entrance to inner earth. So that's how I saw it. And then basically this is the earth from the side. So we get all of this going on on the bottom, which is other ET races. And then this is where everybody, you know, was living in the time of Atlantis. And they populated this whole area. And then what happened is because of all the endless wars, the a higher group came. So this higher group, I got that they were blue. And they're the ones who created this frequency dome. And they made an agreement with the Anunnaki that they would go into this dome and they would learn. And the Anunnaki, you know, I think that it was go into the dome or die, but I'm not positive about that. But I know there was gonna be a harder consequence if they didn't go in. And it was basically for learning. So what they were hoping is this would cause accelerated learning and growth. And it was all about consciousness. But what happened, and this happened a thousand years ago, is what I got. So this dome went up a thousand years ago. And also they were supposed to basically give the humans their own free will. And they were, they were enslaving the humans. They had their human slaves in there. And the other humans were loose. So they were on the outside doing what they wanted. They weren't enslaved. But that whole group went into the dome, including the humans that they owned at the time. And anyway, so they were just in there being greedy being naughty. And 542 years ago, I got is when the Jesus movement moved into the dome. 
and they came from outside the dome. So these souls came from outside the dome and got incarnated in the dome to raise the consciousness. And what they wanted to do was share what love really was. So they could take away the selfishness and instead incorporate the love. So that love vibe did really influence the humans, but it did not influence the Anunnaki or the rulers. So it, it didn't break down the dome. And then they were kind of stuck in there because I don't think that it was really time for them to go, but they were ready. They wanted to go. They had tremendous empathy for the others that were inside the dome. And they also were extremely advanced in comparison. But I get that not all of them were as aware as Jesus or as we, what's the other word? What's his real name? Yeshua. Yeshua. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So he was the one that was extremely aware. So he was the one that woke up all of his people and basically they did their very best to try and change that. But the Anunnaki were more powerful at that time. And they basically wiped them out and then changed the whole story. So they deleted a lot of the story. The victors created the history, basically. So anyway, they were in there. And then around 1776, which is also a huge time period in the United States, the tall grays began to infiltrate. So they began to come into the dome. And the higher beings also came into the dome. So part of the creators, you know, of the dome. So the original constitution was something that they assisted with, the higher beings. And the tall grays basically had infiltrated a lot of the Anunnaki at that point. So they took over the ruling class. And that's how they continuously ate away at what could have been a really beautiful thing at that time. <clears throat> and I got that in 1796, they hit the dome with some kind of a shockwave frequency weapon. And that is what caused the mud flood. So it was really more of a liquefaction of the soil, but you know, to everybody, it looks like a mud flood. And it, it really wiped out a lot of the Anunnaki's beautiful buildings that had been created. So I wanna show you some of those buildings. So here's one of the Anunnaki slash Tartarian Atlantean buildings. And right here where the circle is, that is free energy. So right here, you can see these little strands that come down. That's basically the wire that carries the energy into the building. And these buildings were much taller than they appear to be because you can see, and I can't show you right now, but basically where all these little pictures are, there's a sidewalk. But underneath that is the rest of the building. So the higher you go into the atmosphere, the more electricity there is. Is that kind of like the iceberg effect? That you're as far as the iceberg? Yeah, well, you know, how most, you, of, most of the building is below the ground. Yes. Right. Yeah. And so these are the hybrids. Let me see if I can click that away. So these are the hybrids between the Anunnaki 
and the um, humans were the giants. And they're just very tall humanoid people. And a lot of them were very kind and sweet. So they weren't bad guys. Some of them were. <laughs> and then here is the cities that they would build. So from above, they would build these star-shaped cities, which I think had to do with the energy as well. So what I got, the, the free energy and the frequency. And then here is a modern day giant. So they're still here. There's not very many left, I don't think, but they're still here. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing. Actually, but, I have a question about the, the picture where you had drawn the globe okay. like this, and, and then you had- uh, Let me, uh, uh, let me go back. Earth on top. Or I would give it, if you know which one I mean, I just have kind of like, so you had uh, uh, the, the little continents outside of it, and then it was just blue. So it's more, it's like the earth is flat, on top, but then yeah. it's a sphere. So what's what's kind of around the sphere? So nobody lives there. So around yeah. the sphere is just, I mean, it's land mass I get, you know, or energy or ocean, but it's almost just like energy. And I get that there's portals that go into the earth on those sides. And then at the bottom is another group of landmass and ocean. So really on earth, you can only live on the top or the bottom. So it's funny. It's almost like both theories are right. If it, it's the sphere, it's the flat, it's both. <laughs> yeah, it is both. And the atmosphere yes. though is round. So like mm -hmm. we do have a, a dome shaped atmosphere above us. And that's what that line was that went around it. Yeah, so there's like uh, our little dome, and then there's like the outside dome that yeah. encompasses all of it. Right, yeah. and that atmosphere but ours goes is more around the whole one. thing. And then what? Yeah, but ours, the smaller one, is more the frequency yes. one, and the other one is more of an atmosphere. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yeah. So then if you don't live on the top or the bottom uh, of live the inside. sphere, you live inside kind of like the, the Swiss cheese thing. I mean, with all these portals, it's, you know, and all. Yeah. I got it was like a honeycomb in there. Honeycomb, so, that's a great way to describe it. Mm -hmm. And let's see if there's anything else. So between, just between the 1796 time period and now, they had been killing off all the um, giants. They were sneaky, doing sneaky stuff these tall grays and they took over more and more and more of society and they did it with propaganda they did it by changing out the structures of society um and the goal was to steal the light from the humans so basically um they were just stealing the light from the humans and let me pause here. You lost me, didn't you? No, we see you. Oh, you do? Yeah, we see you. Okay, so I'm just not sure where. Okay, so as far as those time periods go, they were killing out the giants or the human Anunnaki hybrids. And the goal was to steal the light from the humans. And how did they do that? They did that through fear. So at the end of this, I'm going to talk about just a few of the things that are coming, but whatever you do, don't get like caught up in the fact that, you know, this has been so yucky in the past because these grays have been banished at this point. So they're not here anymore and we're about to go into something really awesome. So now we're going to do questions. <laughs> <clears throat> who wants to ask I just want to say um 
I'm really seeing how how you're explaining the years. So the whole thing, just a different concept about how long ago it was when Jesus was here. Mm -hmm. I'm really understanding now how Hebrew, Greek, whatever, whatever language was turned into the language that we speak now just through words to control everybody and they created it and now i mean it's been coming up and i've been talking about it but i really really see how that's happened yeah and it was to create uh spells right. so i don't think they yeah. were really the grays created the extreme evil i think the anunnaki were mostly like greedy and kind of disconnected from their souls kind of cold you know they just wanted what they wanted and they didn't care how they got it but when they got taken over because they were greedy they really took it to a whole nother level and it was all about fear and basically stealing souls and light and energy right <clears throat> I thought it was interesting when you were um, showing the pictures, which I really enjoyed, the um, the shape of their cities, the, and you know, back when in the star shape. And you yeah. know, we've been uh, none of us, you know, if you, unless you were a pilot or you know, we don't see aerial views of things. So we're realizing with the 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 sea or the bad people um, that they're again, if it's energies and frequencies and spells, yeah. That, symbolism is our downfall and that it's the owl shape and all this kind of stuff that DC and all the, everything had a purpose in the shape that they made it mm -hmm. it's just the star shape and the, you know back in those days it was for good and this has not been so that was just interesting yeah yeah it's really interesting and it's interesting how they've reintroduced a lot of technology and almost tainted it as well at the same time because for, for you and I, if you're going to go build something, to me, you know, we never thought about it. It was just more random. You just kind of build it and you look at your little space and this is kind of, there's a hill here and a hill there. No, no one would have thought that it was mapped out from, from the, you know, space or from up right. above higher. Mm -hmm. Right. Wow. Well, and it's also, I think, goes to show that there, there was, like, why would someone build a star shape, you know, canals or like if there wasn't for a purpose? You know, right. like there's go through all that and be able to map it out if you don't have some form of aerial view. You couldn't do that digging trenches right. and get this perfect star shape right little city, right? So you would have had some kind of technology to do that. And the even the motive and the intention of doing it, there would need to be something more than just like, look, we can do something cool, right? Like yeah. to serve a purpose. Yeah. And it was about frequency. Yeah. So one thing that I learned from someone else and it resonated as true is do you guys know what the, the NASDAQ lines are? Those lines out in the desert and they look like weird figures. And so basically when the grays first came, that's, that's their stamp they put on the earth. Like this is ours. We own it. And that's within this dome. And all of these people that Anunnaki and the Greys agreed to give the humans free will. But the Anunnaki didn't really do it, you know, because they were still enslaving them. But the, uh, the Greys just completely took over the minds of people with all the propaganda. To me, those, um, like the picture of the city uh, made into a star that you showed, they built that and the center is a portal. They knew how to create that to make the center. Like that's where, to me, what's going to me is that's where their city got their energy from. They built it like that in the middle, whether it was a crystal or whatever they put in the middle, that was their a vista or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that, res that really resonates that's a yeah that's a good download so there's so much information like inside of us and that's where the real information is going to come 
in the future. Like we're all going to get our memories back. So you're not going to wonder like, Ooh, is this person telling the truth or should I believe this person? Or, you know, I really like that person. So they must be telling the truth. You're just going to know. Everything will just be known inside of you. Well, and I think even the last two years, I think that knowing has just grown stronger for a lot of people that myself included, like I would have had some knowings, but now I'm like, I know things that probably two years ago, I wouldn't have been so firm. There's that inner knowing where it doesn't really need to be validated externally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what other questions do you guys have? Or like, is there anything about those time periods that you're interested in? So what specifically happened to the graves? Do you know? Like what's, so they were, you know, I obviously guess the, evil. the yeah. upper, the higher ET beings. So the ones that are from a higher density are the ones who got rid of them. So they're, they knew that we're coming into a time period, like, it's a cycle. So we're in a certain place in the universe right now. And they knew they had to get rid of them, that they were done. They weren't allowed to stay any longer because they were, their energy was kind of infecting, you know, outside the dome. So, and one thing that I got is that the people that are outside the dome need us to wake up so that we're gonna go through this ascension process together. So it's really important that we get it together and we can't get it together if we still have them in here with all their weird energy devices and nonsense that they've been doing. Yep. And what about the dome, right? <clears throat> like what's the, is the dome gonna stay? Is it gonna like, if we, like, do we need to hit, is it a per certain, part of the ascension process where we hit a certain crit critical mass where that will come down or how do you see that playing out so what i see is that the sun is beginning to disintegrate the dome the real sun and that's why we sometimes people see two suns yeah yeah so the real sun is the big sun and that sun is the frequencies are because of where we're moving to, the frequencies are elevating. So that frequency dome won't be able to survive much longer. So what's going to happen is it will disintegrate and then we will actually see the real sky. And our bodies. So our are, physical bodies. Our upper, so our physical yeah. bodies are going through so much, going from the carbon base to the crystalline base. Yeah. We have to get to that point before the dome's gone. We can't be that carbon-based human anymore because we won't be able to physically. And that has to do with the gravity where they're controlling the level of gravity underneath the dome somehow. Because yeah. that makes us so much more dense, which has to do with the emotions and all of that goes together. But that's why we all need to be dealing with our emotions to let go of a lot of that density. Yeah, because we can't take the backpack of you know, limiting beliefs or blocks in our subconscious to the next level. So we have to so be- honey, okay. honey, do you see this dis disintegration of the dome <clears throat> being super gradual? I mean, it, or is it going to be, get to a kind of a point where, you know, like an, like an earthquake or like something that happens really quickly? Cause I do see, I do see an event. Yeah. An event. And I believe it will be with the sun and the sun will be what disintegrates the dome. And also I think all of the old systems that have been placed up near the top of the dome, like all the satellite systems and the internet systems, all of those will go. I do get that we will still have all of our transportation systems. So our cars will still work but we might not have communication for a little while. And I get that the sky will look a bit different mm -hmm. and it will be a little darker, like a little darker blue is what I got. And the planets are actually closer than what we see. So, and the stars are farther away. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> 
So that's going to be an interesting day. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> at, at, that time, at that point in time, will a lot of the uh, 3D or a lot of the people who are not ascending, will a lot of them be already gone? I think there will be a gradual process of people deciding to go. I think, mm -hmm. I think some will actually be somewhere else. And I'm not sure how that's going to work exactly. Okay. Whether it will be like a different density. And I'll be honest, that's something I want to stay away from. Like, yeah. because yeah. really what <clears throat> we have to kind of know that some people are meant to ascend. They came to ascend. And some of the mm -hmm. 3D people will ascend in this process, but some are so newly 3D that they're not ready. So it would be like somebody swimming from one continent, from like, you know, the East Coast of the United States to England, just swimming there. Like it would be that hard for them mm -hmm. because it's just too big. It's too big of a deal. Mm -hmm. So they have mm -hmm. more growing to do, but just to remember that, you know, we're all, we're all a soul inside of a body. Yeah. So we're just going yeah. through our stuff, but there will be a population change, but yeah. I actually think most of that will happen over this next year. Perfect. Ready. So, so the controllers kind of, you know, that are running the show right now, did they make contracts kind of with the the grace or how, how do they or is it more of a purely like psychopathic you know rogue humans or how do you see uh, i think they kind of took over the minds of yeah the, yeah they took over their mind so the grays are like they have like a hive mind mm -hmm. and it's a really dark mind it's very selfish and it only wants it's using the grays as well but I got that they took over the um, reptilians and the Anunnaki rulers. And they did it in different ways, but mostly it's energetic. Like they just took them over. So they became part of the Borg, basically. So they didn't really have much of a choice. But they did it because they agreed to do it. Like they said, yes we'll get everything we want, then yes, we will, you know, so. Can't How be long so greedy. <laughs> yeah, and when did that kind of come into place? Like when did that? So that started, what I got is it started around the 1776 time period that they started to really take them over. And then shortly after that, they did that frequency wave and then they gained more and more power. But the good, you know, the good ETs were here at the same time trying to lift us up. Like that's why that constitution got created. And but then shortly after that, it was like altered too. And the United States became a corporation versus a country. So and all the countries are corporations versus countries. So and what we're dealing with right now, uh, the United States about to have the Pluto return and the last time was 1776. So see that cycle now. Yeah. Ooh, that was big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's we're a lot of cycles all within of that. cycles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's but, a lot of those other planets that are coming, coming around again. That's mm -hmm. going to be, yeah, Pluto probably being the biggest one, right? For yeah, yeah, and I think that our astrology is fashioned after like what really is up there, but some of it I feel like is like exaggerated somehow. Mm -hmm. But it is also the clock, so. It's the clock of the universe and how everything is working. That, so this brings up again, this came up in the last one where I think you said two Venuses and then I said something else about it later that week. And then the video that you're gonna share with this 
of the guy. Yeah. The picture that he has. So that picture shows different uh, planetary, more than one. And I've been hearing that lately, people talking about more than one of each planet. Right. And I think it has to do with densities, like whether we can see through the densities. Right. So like in the third density, I get that Venus is not an active planet. Like there aren't human or ET beings on it in this third density, but at a higher density there are. So it is inhabited. And I think as you go up in the densities, things are more inhabited just in general than they are at these lower densities. It's almost like planets that are still forming you know, they're still going through a lot of the chaos that the earth went through, like, you know, the volcano stuff and all of the beginnings where it was just kind of a bare rock. That's what I get. <laughs> but it's, a. I think the densities are a really big key. And I think that the higher ETs can move in and out of the densities through portals. And I think eventually we will be able to do that as well. Right, because that's just energetic, just mm -hmm. light, just on yeah. a different level. Well, and our bodies will be more able to adapt a little bit, but we're moving into the fourth density. So it's the fourth density positive for earth right now. And I think that our consciousness is moving into the fifth dimension. So love with wisdom is where we're moving. Maybe you should draw a picture of that. Densities versus dimensions. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it in my head, but I'm sure that's the one that. Yeah. yeah. There's a movie and I'll try and remember the name of it and put it under in the descriptions that really shows the dimensions and the dimensions are kind of physical too. Like, I mean, it looks physical, but really the densities are the most physical thing. So the densities are like these massive planes of existence, you know, that go up higher and higher. And the higher you go, the older you are and the um, lighter you become. So your bodies are lighter and everything's a little more fun the higher you go up. <laughs> so you get to do more fun stuff. <laughs> um, but they've come back to help. So basically it's the older versions of us. Right. And we also infiltrated this dome. So when you think about how the grays infiltrated the dome, over the last hundred years, the ETs have, you know, the good ETs have been infiltrating this dome and the angels, and, you know, all of the higher beings have been infiltrating and coming in as human beings to change the consciousness. So they weren't the only ones that infiltrated. We also did. You have any other stuff? Should we talk about what's coming? Oh, go ahead, Julianne. Well, I was, I was just going to say if I was going to do this now or later, but um, the infiltrating, my question kind of was sightings of the UFOs and all that <clears throat> stuff that would be within our dome, probably. But then, you know, but then, you know, people have had experiences of being taken up into ships and, you know, whatever. Um, would they have the ability to take you outside of the dome to go into? those ships are there ships outside of the dome yeah i get that they can and there are certain doorways to come in to the dome okay. and one of those is by antarctica so, so there are certain yeah and wow. there's been you know the higher beings and the lower beings have been in here or the dark and the light have been in here and cloaked for a long time but really it hinges on us. It hinges on the human beings, you know, our ability to raise our consciousness because that's what this is all about. Cool. Thank you.
Mm -hmm. So do you guys have any questions about like what's coming? Like what is the good stuff that's about ready to happen? <laughs> well, what do you have for us? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think that we will get to partake in all of the technology. So the technology that's basically a thousand years ahead of us on the outside of the dome. And we will slowly integrate with the Tartarians. And I think that, what else was I getting? There was something. So basically that would take until like 2030. Mm -hmm. So we won't be traveling over there that often, but it'll slowly get more and more integrated. And that's part of how Ascension will happen for us and for them, you know, coming together and growing even more. And the process that we've gone through is going to help them as well, because it's been such a difficult process. So, yeah. And then when yeah, that happens, about... go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, and when that happens, the other parts of land that haven't been, people aren't living on, will be inhabited or be able to be lived on, like on the top, on your picture? Oh, yeah. So they are inhabited, but sparsely, like there's not as many. There's That's where the Tartarians live now, but we'll be able to go and visit them and they'll be able to visit us and our society and the land that we're on right now will change pretty dramatically, I think, in how we build and how we gather together. I, I don't see huge cities in the future. Um, I think it'll be smaller communities that come together and kind of create an intention, you know, like, our intention is to provide a certain amount of food for this huge valley of, you know, people or something like that, you know, or they're working on a certain thing. So I think that'll be how that works. So do you think that the, the collapse of the dome, if you will, like, the, like, will that be closer to 2030 or closer to now and then the kind of the rebuild and the integration and all that will take up to 2030. I think it will be within 18 months. Mm -hmm. So, but it won't mean death, you know, that's the main thing. Like it's really just about like continuing the crystalline body upgrade that I believe will be a really big event <laughs> and a shock to the world. And I, I think we will see the sky change, you know, within the next two years. Mm -hmm. So that kind of means though, that there's some people that might not understand what's going, or it might be a, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm trying to like see it in a timeline kind of way. Cause I also find it interesting that the, UN Agenda 2030, like, you know, they've had that goal for 2032. So it feels like it's kind of like a race, if you will, to yeah. 2030, so right? Yeah, I think 2030 is when we'll become more integrated, but mm -hmm. I think it was 2021 to begin with. Yeah, the first, yeah. 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 So they really kind of just missed the boat. <laughs> and I think the the moving it to the 2030 was just part of the white hat saying, Oh, they're still going to do it. They're still after mm -hmm. us. You better get it together. Wake up. You know, um, I feel like 2030 is when things are going to be more integrated. Like we'll be able to have better vehicles to travel to these other places. We won't be using these big clunky planes anymore. Yeah, but we're gonna have to- That feels it. good. Yeah. <laughs> I've been on a plane one time from here to Vegas and it was a lot, but I wanna go so many places, but I don't wanna get on a plane. <laughs> yeah, I think that travel will be very fast in the future. Mm -hmm. 
And I think some of the tunnels were actually made for travel, but you know, they were basically, you know, taken over by nastiness, but I don't really see the ones, I think the ones that were made for travel, some of them will remain. So we might actually be able to go like under the ocean and to another continent, like yes. very quickly too. So, and I get that we're going to be just a world people, you know, not, oh, I'm from America and I'm from Europe and I'm from, you know, I think we'll just eventually become just, we live on earth, you know, or we live on Terra or whatever people decide to call it. Mm -hmm. So without all the divisions that they have inserted to us. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't even think that we'll feel divided between species anymore. Like, you know, if we meet someone that is blue or green or whatever color they might be you know and they came in on a spaceship i think we'll just be excited to meet them you know and because of the telepathy that will be in going the language will be universal basically right and we'll know mm -hmm. what their intentions are so we're going to get our gifts back so our gifts are going to be things like telepathy I think we'll be able to move things with our mind. I think we'll be able to begin to work with frequencies ourselves and heal our own bodies. And yeah, there's a lot of good stuff coming. Exciting. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, honey. Thank you. Does You're anybody else good. have anything else? Good. Okay. Well, thanks guys. I think this was really fun. And I, I think we'll talk about, you know, the next stuff, you know, the stuff that comes after, you know, the dome disintegrates next. And as everything falls, like, well, how's that going to feel and look and stuff? Yeah, yeah. that'd be awesome. Okay. All Thank right, you. everybody. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Bye.